Hi, and welcome to Prepping Essentials. Good morning, it's 7.15 on Saturday 22nd of August. Just making my way down to the land. It's a uh, bright sunny day after a couple of days of storms. As always, not quite sure what we'll get done today, but let's find out. Well, here we are down on the land. I've stepped into the shade because <laughs> it is a quite bright this morning. Uh, strange weather this week. We had a few days of really hot temperatures and brilliant sunshine. And then the last two days, uh, we've had a storm come through with some really quite strong winds. Uh, but more importantly, we've had a bit of rain. Um, I say a bit because it is only a bit, it's not been that much at all really. Lots of noise, <laughs> but uh, not much result. Uh, so I have had to keep on top of the water in this week. But uh, anyway, here we are. So as usual, I'm gonna get myself opened up and then we'll uh, have a little look at the vegetables in the garden and then see what else we can get done today. Well, as usual, first things first, just opened up the polytunnel. I'll just let that uh, cool down a bit <laughs> while I run round the outside. Um, this mixed bed of pumpkin and squash continues to have lots of growth and flowers, but uh, not a great deal of fruit uh, to be seen. There's a little tiny squash down there that's just coming through. Uh, there's a big fairly sizable uh, pumpkin there which is just it looks like it's getting a bit stressed I think the trouble with most of the uh, the vegetables outside there's a couple more there look one there and one there I think the uh, the trouble with the outside garden this year which is my first year <laughs> it's it's watering we've had a really bizarre um, weather system this year with pretty unheard of temperatures and for quite prolonged periods of time and it has been difficult as you'll know from watching my previous videos it's been difficult to get down and keep on top of the watering so we've had uh, I think the plants have got too dried out well I know some of them definitely have got too dried out um, and that will have affected uh, the growth and ultimately their production of, of the fruit and veggies uh, but what to do <laughs> we live and learn so polytunnel what's going on in here uh, we'll start around this side um, not a great deal of change apart from this blueberry, you can tell in the colour difference, I'm sure, um, it's continuing to put on some quite substantial growth. It really is turning into quite a sizeable plant. Um, I didn't have the heart to take the peas out. <laughs> uh, and to, to be fair to them, bless them, um, they're producing flowers on all of the plants. Um, We've got like another flush of growth. Um, so they might not look very nice, but I just haven't got the heart to rip them out. Uh, cucumbers, yep, still growing, still producing uh, fruit. Never seen anything on this squash at all. I don't know what it's, <coughs> what it's doing, but it's not producing flowers or fruit, just lots of uh, leaf growth. The little blueberry bush has turned into a big blueberry bush and as has this cranberry which is actually producing, you can see or not, but it is producing cranberries. Not quite sure if I'm truthful how that is best grown. It, I'm going to have to do a little bit of research I think. Um, tomatoes, 
the little tomato forest keeps getting bigger and bigger. I've um, been tying these up uh, during the week when I've come down to water. Um, and we have got, to be fair, we have got tomatoes. All, all of the plants have got, if you can see that or not, all of the plants have got tomatoes on. Um, they are everywhere. Some more buried back behind there. All the way down. There's loads buried behind. If I can fight my way through the back of there. Uh, not so many at this end, it has to be said. But we do have some. Uh, they're there. So, I don't know what you'd call that. I mean... I've said all along that I've not really much idea what to do with tomatoes. Um, they just continue to flower, but they're not producing the fruit that they should be, considering <laughs> what a forest it's turned out to be. But, as with everything we live and learn, the one thing I can't complain about is these strawberries. Um, like a bit of a kleptomaniac here, I'm... Uh, <laughs> Every time I see a, a, a new runner come out, I'm burying it in uh, these little seed trays to produce extra plants. And I have got, because there's some more over here, I have got loads and loads of them now. <laughs> if anything's been successful in this polytunnel, <laughs> it's the strawberry plants. Um, fig continues to put on lots of new growth. That is getting quite sizable now. and. Would you believe it? Look at this. Can that go into focus? We've got a little fig coming. How about that? <laughs> I've always said I've got high hopes for this and uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting fruit. Um, so that's certainly cheered me up today. <laughs> Um, the succession planting, I've got carrots. This pot, for some reason, I mean, it's had exactly the same as the others in terms of seed quantity, but <laughs> we've got the odd stray ones, and that's about it. Um, whereas the other ones, um, lots of seeds have, have germinated in those. So I will have succession planting. Um, whether they stay in here or go outside remains to be seen. Um, <clears throat> cauliflower, some quite uh, nice plants coming now off that first tray that I sowed. Um, they're not far off really from wanting to be potted on. Um, and similarly, the ones I planted a couple of weeks later, um, they're all coming through as well. Some quite nice uh, sort of half finger sized plants coming on those. Um, not as many as I thought, but this is a real experiment because I don't know whether these will survive to maturity or not. Um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Um, a bit random, these uh, cuttings of cranberry and blueberry that I took. Um, well, what can I say? They've survived. <laughs> they're, certainly, they're certainly still uh, green and seem to be rooting. I don't rummage around in that compost at this stage but they certainly seem to be and I don't know whether it's me or not but that cranberry um, those leaves are very very green so I'm, I'm hoping that they have rooted and we'll have some more plants for next year uh, moving on to outside <laughs> I don't even show you I'll go on I will show you uh, <laughs> these tomato plants that I put outside um, they have been battered by the winds this last couple of days. Um, I, re I am religiously watering these, I do promise you, um, during the week. But <laughs> they are really looking sorry for themselves. Um, I ought to really just do the humane thing and put them out of their misery, but I don't know if I can bring myself to. <laughs> um, potatoes. No signs yet of any of those um, new potatoes uh, coming through, but what's it been a week? I'm losing track. A week. Certainly no more than two. <coughs> so I'm not expecting those. Um, 
I'm going to leave this one uh, probably for another week or so just to let it get a bit uh, more growth because although these have died back as you can see they're still putting out new leaves <laughs> so I don't know I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing whether that will stop them from growing the tubers um, or, or not and this last one that went in quite uh, a few weeks after the others so that definitely doesn't need to come out yet uh, where to go we'll stay this side carrots still doing well in these buckets um, I did pick some last week I'm not going to pick any this week I'm going to let those grow a little bit more um, because the ones I picked were fairly small they were nice very tasty <clears throat> and in fact last night um, I finished the last of them so I'll leave those I'll not drag any out this week onions growing very well um, again this is a bit of an experiment because these went in really late um, but as you can see on that bucket back there they're putting on some quite sizable and quite rapid growth it has to be said um, squash still producing lots of flowers um, but still only very little fruit I uh, can't remember where they are the, the, we do definitely have oh there they are we do definitely have pumpkin uh, squash growing but um, not many it has to be said despite the really large amount of flowers we've had they don't all seem to be turning into fruit um, I did notice a couple of them had started producing fruit and then they'd quickly died off there's only really that one that's of any of any size and it is a nice size it's you know hand size again I think this is down to watering uh, pumpkin that is producing it's going everywhere and it is producing fruit um, we've got quite a a number now of, of larger sized ones um, there's one buried down there look that's hand size and there's another one I think it's the biggest one over here again that's the span of my hand and there's another one over here uh, this is the biggest one actually which is actually bigger than my hand um, but I do think it's down to watering the, the these raised beds have just not had water consistent water and enough of it um, over the course of, of the summer um, these empty raised beds are ready for <clears throat> the cauliflower uh, and perhaps the carrot buckets to come outside garlic doing well I think that's going to be a, uh, a new year crop <laughs> and there's a couple of stray onions down there <laughs> remember that cabbage the surprise free gift uh, well it's certainly been a free gift for the butterflies because they've just completely destroyed that look um, I did leave it in to uh, try and get it to grow and to be fair in the centre it is still trying to grow but it's it's just been hammered and in fact I don't know if you can see let me just get this netting off but uh, there is a bloody great big caterpillar chomping away on there as we speak so yeah other side the beetroot to be fair uh, that's growing well I did think that that was going to uh, die off because of the heat but um, sturdy little things <laughs> they've come back and uh, they're actually going to definitely go on to produce some decent beets so that's the outside little update I'm going to uh, do what I pretty much always do now grab a cup of coffee have a little think about what I'm going to do and we'll catch up with you in a little while I suspect it's going to be another hot day and I'm not entirely convinced that storm's gone so we might get a bit of wind today as well but uh, we'll just keep plodding on as always
I thought I'd have a quick run round with the watering can uh, in the polytunnel before I sat and had my coffee. <laughs> I just can't stop doing little jobs. So I'm just filling these containers back up. Uh, they're 20 litre containers and I'm using two of these at least, or I have been, every day. Um, so it's a fair amount of water considering that there's not that much really now uh, that's growing, particularly in the raised beds. Have a little quick look at what we've got in terms of stored water. Uh, what have we got? So it's about 825 litres in each of those cans, which to be fair is not far off what it was last week. So the couple of little days yesterday and the day before where we did have that little bit of rain, essentially all that's done is topped up what I've used so far this week. Uh, so it is difficult keeping on top of this and it kind of emphasises the point I guess if you are off grid and you don't have access to mains water, uh, particularly in the summertime if you have a, a year like we've had, you are going to struggle uh, to keep on top of the watering, not just from a physical activity perspective but also from the fact that you need to get your water from somewhere. Um, I think I might have mentioned it in my little lessons learned video. There's 2,000 litres stored water, or there will be when it's when the tanks are full. Um, and I suspect if we have another year like this next year, that 2,000 litres, <laughs> it ain't going to go very far. Um, so I think uh, as we progress into next year, um, I'm going to have to start expanding uh, this stored water. Um, but. As I keep saying in my videos, <clears throat> it is all a learning curve. That's the whole point of this, is to try and learn now what works and what doesn't uh, before it comes to crisis time. And you haven't got access to the normal mains grid. So, I am going to get myself back in the cabin. I've got a little toy, new toy in that box there uh, to play with later. But I'll get these water cans filled up and I will definitely have my cup of coffee. Well, I finally got a chance to sit down with my cup of coffee. The water tanks are filled up and back in the polytunnel. Uh, so they'll be there ready for me tomorrow. Uh, hopefully we'll get some rain later today. Though looking at the sky outside, <laughs> I am doubting it because uh, I do have to keep on top of those raised beds. Um, so I just thought I'd have a five minute sit down. I did take a little bonus video for you this morning uh, before I left to come down to the land. Um, you might remember that I grow some vegetables at home um, as well as here on the land. Um, mainly potatoes it has to be said because it's convenient I can just pop out uh, and, and pick them up direct from outside in between my trips to the land. So I'll share that little video this morning, bit of a potato reveal. Um, again, there are some lessons learned in that, uh, so take a look at that and then we'll come back and, I don't know, maybe we'll have another little chat while I'm drinking my coffee. Regular viewers to the channel will recognise this from last year, I think it was. Um, as well as having vegetables growing down on the land, I do grow vegetables at home in containers and buckets, and that's the remnants of potatoes that are planted. As with last year I've managed to get these potato berries so I'm going to definitely be harvesting those. In fact I'll pick them now because I thought just as a little bit of a something different for you I'd do a potato reveal on this bucket before I pop down to the land. I'll just pop the tarpaulin down to <clears throat> make sure I can collect the soil. So let's tip this out and take a look and see what we've got. There are a few potatoes that have broken the surface and they're not going to be great. But uh, we'll just get rid of those now. But let's take a look and see. It's 
quite uh, moist this because we had a, a storm came through uh, last night and the night before so it's a little bit wet oh, but there we are there's our first potatoes nothing much at the bottom Fairly small. They really did look like they were ready to come out, but I'm beginning to think they weren't. Yeah, they look too bad. Baby ones. Yeah, I suspect that the long periods of hot weather have affected this. Certainly not as many as I got last year from the same container nice compost still still looks quite rich Probably because it's not to work too hard for these potatoes. There's a few more. is nature so you never do quite know what you want to get and of course we should be grateful for whatever we do get well that's a big one I'll just pop that back and then we'll then you can see what we've got well that's the crop it is a little bit disappointing compared to last year from the same bucket we've gone from the <laughs> the babyest to really quite a sizable potato um, something that is different from last year I've got a bit of this scab which I've not had um, either here in the um, the house containers or indeed down on the land. 
but it'll peel off and I've got uh, two little potato berries there as well <clears throat> I'll do what I did last year and harvest those seeds and that'll be a little project for me at some point in the polytunnel but I just thought I'd share that with you before I went down to the land so it's a little bonus video <laughs> well I hope you enjoyed that little <clears throat> potato reveal video it was a little bit disappointing in that I didn't get as many potatoes uh, this year as I did last year and I did have that little bit of a um, potato scab issue that I've never had before anywhere whether it's at home in the uh, the containers or here uh, in the barrels on the land and the only thing I can really put it down to is the weather um, this year has been remarkably dry and long extended periods and both at home and down here on the land um, the container grown stuff <laughs> and indeed the polytunnel um, I've not been able to keep on top of the watering as much as I should have and the plants have dried out and clearly they've they've suffered and you'll have seen in many of my previous videos um, the sorry state that some of some of my plants have got into um, there's lots of different issues rolled up into that, but one of them, which I might explore now, is the subject of time. Um, it's probably the va most valuable commodity in anybody has, um, because for sure it is finite. Um, we are all going to run out of it at some point. Um, and there's absolutely nothing you can do really about it. Um, it's certainly something that I've mentioned in previous videos since I started the little off-grid uh, project down here on the land. Um, it's extremely difficult if you have to go to work, um, as I clearly do every week. Um, obviously I can't do without going to work because you need the money to do everything that you need to do. Um, but I am conscious of, of how much time um, is required not just for gardening and raising your plants but for this off-grid uh, homestead idea it's everything takes a lot longer than you would think it does and I'll be the first to hold my hand up and confess I I had in the back of my mind that um, you would be able to just pop up on a piece of land and magically your cabin and polytunnel and raised beds and all the other things uh, would quickly appear over a short space of time. And anyone who's been with the channel for a while and has watched the videos regularly will know that that certainly isn't the case. Um, you do need an awful lot of time. So for those that have adopted this off-grid lifestyle um, and have managed to be able to set up their homestead hats off to you it is an extremely difficult thing to do um, unless you've got a substantial and i mean a substantial amount of cash um, to start off with and you don't physically need to go out to work every day um, to generate that income um, <laughs> be prepared for a long journey um, it's taken me now what is it it's coming up to the year point actually the one year anniversary um, I'm racking my brain trying to think when I actually bought the land and first started but I'm fairly sure it was August September have a little spool through the videos and you'll quickly find out um, so whilst I am pleased that a lot has been achieved in that year, um, clearly, <laughs> as you see from my regular updates, there's quite some way to go. Um, fortunately, and I guess this is key, um, we're not in a crisis grid down scenario where we're having to fend for ourselves with whatever it is that we've got. Um, I can still wake up in the morning in my home with all the creature comforts 
have my breakfast, get ready, drive off to work, do my day's work, come back and then whatever time's left, um, pick up on this um, off-grid project um, as and when I do have the time off. It would be a vastly different story had we had our major grid down crisis let's say for example um, COVID-19 wasn't COVID-19 but was something like Ebola <laughs> with an 80-90% kill rate um, and everything would have definitely stopped including the grid um, where would we then be? Um, touch wood uh, I would be in a position where I have enough uh, essential supplies stored up to ride out for, I don't know, let's say six months, ten months perhaps, in stored food, um, depending on the weather, uh, perhaps not with stored water, um, but those items will run out. Again, it's time. Uh, the longer the period of time that you have to survive on what you've got, um, very quickly those stores will run out. So that kind of brings me to the next bit of the time. Uh, the time it takes to actually be become self-sufficient in food. Um, certainly for me it's been a big learning curve this past year. Uh, as I've experimented with growing my own uh, food. Again, it takes a long time between planting the seed and that seed then germinating, growing and finally producing the fruit or vegetables uh, from those seeds. Uh, you're talking about a significant growing time to actually get from seed to harvest. So again, whatever stores you've got set aside, you're going to quickly work through those until you're in a position to start to replenish them with the things that you've grown. And <laughs> clearly from my side and the experience of this past year, um, it's quantity as well. Um, you have to invest a significant amount of time and resource necessary to grow in sufficient quantity to replace your stored food. And let's not forget, you also need to have sufficient to set aside some of that produce that you've grown to become stored food. Because when the growing season ends, you're gonna have a period of time where nothing is growing, nothing has been harvested, um, and you'll be focusing your energy on watching the sky. <laughs> For the weather to be good enough and for you to start all over again by planting your seeds for the next year's harvest. So time. Um, it is something that you're definitely going to need uh, and you're going to need lots of it to invest in your off-grid um, both build and maintain uh, your off-grid lifestyle and you're certainly going to need a lot of time to invest um, in growing the food that you're going to need were we to get into that off-grid scenario uh, to sustain you through whatever comes in the future uh, once the crisis has ended. Anyway, so I just thought I'd share that little uh, lessons learned in the video today. Um, there are lots of topics contained within that that I might explore in a, a dedicated Lessons to Learn video. Um, but as far as today is concerned, that's it. I'll finish off my coffee and uh, I'll see where I can get a little few more jobs done.
I've just brought the little tractor out of its garage. Got a little bit of a present for it today. It's been working so hard. Uh, so I've got a little mystery box, which I'll just unbox. Uh, you'll be conscious that I mentioned in a previous video, I think it was last week, how hard the tractor's been working over this past year or so. And you'll have seen various things that I've had maintenance wise to do. I did get a little service and belt change done uh, for the blades. Um, the belt on the blades was replaced and I've had a couple of punctures in tyres and it's been quite a struggle to be honest even the mechanic who came down um, the, these machines are not the easiest in the world to work on if you need to be underneath um, it's difficult to get access so with that in mind I've bought a little present for the tractor which is in this box so I'll just pop the camera down and see if I can't uh, show you the unboxing. You might have to forgive me on the volume. Um, I don't have that lapel mic uh, clipped on for this. So if the volume does disappear, apologies. But you'll see what I'm doing anyway. You don't really need me to talk through the actual opening of the box itself. Here we go. What we've got here is a neat little jacking system to raise the tractor up. Rather than a traditional jack which just lifts up a wheel or an axle, um, this actually lifts up and now tilts the tractor so that the entire bed of the tractor moves through 45 degrees. So it's a fairly simple system, he said. <laughs> we have a, a wind up handle on this side. You drive the tractor on to this bed, two wheels clearly, front or back. Um, but I suspect the back is better, it's more stable. You don't have the turning wheels at the front. And then just by turning this handle, it will raise the, the bed up through 45 degrees and that in turn will raise the tractor allegedly <laughs> so now it's out of the box i'll position it under the tractor and uh, we'll give it a little bit of a test drive Well, I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, it's not wound all the way uh, to its highest point, but I've got a good, I don't know, what's that, two and a half, three foot clearance there. 
Now clearly before I dive underneath that, I would need to take some precautions and just perhaps chuck the front axle. But I've now got access to all of the blades and the belts and just generally the underside chassis and axles of the tractor. So I'm quite pleased with that. I'll chuck it and then I'll uh, have a little bit of an experiment and a play underneath. <laughs> but nice, nice purchase. Very pleased with that. <laughs> it's very strange indeed <laughs> seeing the little red tractor at this angle. <laughs> oh dear. But uh, no, very pleased with that. I forget what I paid for that. 40, 46 pounds, I think. I can't remember. But um, yeah, it gives me access to things that I've never seen before. So I can look underneath now. Oh, perhaps you can't see with that. From there, where I can see all the underside, the various belts and uh, pulleys, the blades themselves. And I've got access, of course, to, to the axle and the underside of the engine. Very nice indeed. I can have <laughs> hours of fun in the sun uh, underneath here and just try and keep on top of the maintenance for the, uh, the little red tractor. Um, talking about fun in the sun, we've now got clouds appearing, which I wasn't expecting today. I thought later tonight we might get a little bit of rain, but it actually looks like and certainly feels like, with the breeze picking up, we might get it sooner rather than later. Not that I'm complaining, because I do need the water. Uh, I ran round this morning, gave everything a little bit of a drink, but uh, it certainly wouldn't hurt to have a bit more rain. Uh, and of course it would help to keep on top of um, the water storage, get those tanks topped up a little bit. Um, but for now, I'm gonna have a little play underneath familiarize myself with all the various bits underneath the tractor that I don't normally get to look at and uh, for sure this is going to be a big help to me uh, to keep on top of the maintenance because bless it <laughs> this little machine has been um, overworked this past year and although it has had a belt change and you know, it wasn't really a, a full service by any stretch of the imagination so it does deserve a little bit of love and affection and now I've got access to the underside um, that's certainly something that I will be doing over the coming weeks because there are a few jobs that want doing on it I know there are so there we go little unboxing of my I don't honestly know what it's called I suppose it's kind of a jacking axle stand of some shape or form but whatever it's called um, it's a nice little piece of kit. Very pleased. Well, that's the cabin locked up. I've had to uh, have a bit of a short day today. Got a few domestic bits and pieces to attend to. So short but sweet video for you today. Polytunnel's all locked up. <laughs> the wind is picking up and looking at the sky. I'd be amazed if we don't get any rain, but with the weather this year, who, who knows? So we'll have to call it day for this video and we'll pick it up again when I come back down the next day. Well, that's it for this video. I hope there was something in there that was of interest to you. If you did like the video, please do click on the like button. Also feel free to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. As always, I welcome any comments, questions or suggestions you might have. Um, it was a bit short and sweet today, uh, but just as I was talking about in the video, time, <laughs> that's something that you can never get enough of. And unfortunately today, uh, my time had to be diverted elsewhere, but I'll make up for it in future videos. Um, don't know what you think about the format of these later videos with the uh, chat in the cabin 
or the uh, longer lessons learned videos. I'm interested as always to know what you think because I do try and make the content of the video around you, the people that are viewing. So do let me know in the comments section below. But for now, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.